Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. The older we get, the faster time seems to pass us by and important pyramid research can quickly be forgotten. But some discoveries should always be remembered. Last year we experienced the excitement around the discovery of the North Face Corridor and in 2017 the big void in the Great Pyramid made headlines around the world. Such discoveries can inspire a generation of enthusiasts and that's precisely what happened to me in the early 1990s. In March 1993, Rudolf Gantenbrink led a project into the Great Pyramid guiding a robot through the four pyramid air shafts and on the robot's journey into the Queen's Chamber southern shaft a major discovery was made. Gantenbrink's work was groundbreaking. Nobody had ever seen into these shafts before. Gantenbrink discovered that the Queen's Chamber southern air shaft did not extend to the outer edge of the pyramid. His robot came face to face with an unexpected find, a door that covered the shaft with two metal pins protruding out of it. Since this discovery, the door has been referred to as Gantenbrink's door, but the story of the discovery should not be forgotten. Thankfully, I've been given permission to publish the original 1995 documentary titled Robot Journey Into the Past, which documents Gantenbrink's journey of discovery. Of course, in the past 29 years, there have been more developments, more missions and more discoveries, but this is the one that started my obsession with the Great Pyramid. And so, I'd like to share the story of the discovery with you. In places the audio cuts out, at times the quality may not be the best, but hopefully by publishing this on the Ancient Architects channel, this documentary will now be preserved for new audiences of the 21st century. It is an important piece of history, charting an important discovery in the world's most enigmatic ancient monument. Thank you for watching and please enjoy. The Pyramids of Egypt. Their futuristic form would seem to belie their ancient origins. Reminders of dead civilization, they've continued to attract us down through the centuries, even as their riddles have, one by one, apparently all been solved. For 4,500 years, the pyramids have stood as testaments to human ingenuity and perseverance. By building these elaborate tombs, so large that they'd towered over the cathedrals of Europe, the ancients showed a remarkable capacity for devotion and organization. Who is to say that they didn't bury a secret so deep that it would take until 1993 to reveal it? The Sphinx, that mythical mixed beast and human, stands guard over the indestructible, the masterpiece, the Pyramid of Cheops. Originally almost 500 feet high, the pyramid was built on a scale nearly impossible to comprehend. 
two and a half million blocks of stone, one block laid every 20 seconds, eight hours a day, six days for 25 years. The eternal peace of the pharaoh Cheops didn't last long. Just a few centuries after he was laid to rest, grave robbers plundered his treasures. In the ninth century, Caliph al-Mamun chopped a hole in the pyramid. But the sarcophagus he found was empty. Ironically, it was with Napoleon that modern study of the pyramids began. In a bold move to expand his empire, he attempted to gain control over the strategic isthmus of Suez and quickly became fascinated by the towering structures. The 19th century also brought a new wave of plunderers who carted off anything they could carry. The archaeologists of that time were not much more sophisticated than the treasures. But their tools were more powerful. They even used dynamite. Although some made significant finds, the search for additional chambers was fruitless. With the first systematic survey of the pyramids, archaeology became more of a science and less of a trap. Its practitioners began to look for the region's most important riches, the treasure of knowledge and understanding. They were led by one of the fathers of modern archaeology, Sir William Flinders Petrie, as well as the German Ludwig Bochardt, who represented the German Orient Society. With the coming of film came a boom in the study of the pyramids. Now the whole world could watch as, bit by bit, the secrets of the pharaohs were brought to light. By the 1920s, other scientists, besides archaeologists, began to flock to Giza. The International Congress of Geology, meeting in Cairo, took a side trip so that its participants could see this ancient use of stone. The age of scientific enlightenment had been reached. Hieroglyphics were deciphered, the results of different expeditions compared. Slowly but surely, the pyramid had given up all of its secrets or had it. In 1993, archaeology enters the space age. Munich, 1991. Rudolf Gantenbrink, a German engineer, sees a challenge. He thinks the archaeologists may have missed something. Could the pyramid conceal one more secret? Gantenbrink has made a career out of putting cameras into out-of-the-way places, from the struts of offshore oil rigs to the bottom of the ocean. Now he sets his sights on the Great Pyramid of Cheops. Modern technology brings it to life. The burial chamber, or King's Chamber, with its empty sarcophagus, lies near the center of the pyramid. From here, the angled green lines show where two air shafts lead to the outer skin of the pyramid. Through these two shafts, the soul of the pharaoh was supposed to escape to begin a new life in the heavens. Gantenbrink had recently explored these in their full length.
But directly below the king's chamber, the so-called queen's chamber is also the source of two angled shafts shown in green. But no one knows how long they are or where they end. Just eight inches square, they are too tiny to be explored with conventional methods. The pyramid has one secret left up. After securing the cooperation of the German Archaeological Institute, Gantenbrink puts together a team to explore the mysterious lower shafts. An idea unimaginable to earlier Egyptologists takes shape. Gantenbrink decides to construct a robot with a camera mounted at the front and a propulsion system designed to maneuver in tight places. Called Yupuat, after the Egyptian god whose name means the opener of the way, the remote control device is designed from scratch by Gantenbrink. The technology of the space age applied to the most ancient of riddles. Since the robot has to go where no man and no machine has gone before, it must be strong. It is constructed out of the same kind of aluminium alloy used in aeroplanes. But in order to carry out its complex task, it must be built to the most exacting standards. Gantenbrink is a best. If the components do not mesh precisely in the workshop, they will never stand up to the harsh conditions inside the pyramid. And bit by bit, the robot begins to take on its final form. A laser guidance system will allow the robot to work out its position. It may also prove useful to probe the dark spaces that you pull out is expected to encounter. The electronic system that guides the robot is extremely sophisticated. Hundreds of components must be connected with the utmost care. It takes several months of painstaking work. Gantenbrink checks the work at every step of the way. Will Yupo out be up to its historic task? A computer animation shows just how highly evolved the creature Yupo out really is. First, the aluminium chassis, light but robust. At front and rear are specially designed motors and gears. Struts provide extra stability. An electronic power supply, the heart of the machine. The laser guidance system, small but extremely accurate. The miniature video camera, Yupo Out's electronic eye. Two high intensity bulbs will illuminate the dark shafts. These high pressure pistons create 200 kilograms of thrust. There are specially designed wheels, guides, and tracks. Finally, the all-important superstructure. It has its own motors, wheels, and tracks. An intelligent machine built for a single purpose. The robot has to be even smaller than the 8-inch wide shaft would call for. There must also be extra breathing room in order to maneuver around obstacles.
The construction is complete. The final component of the robot's brain brings it to life. Now it is time to put Yupu out to the test. This is Yupu out's view of the world. Its swivel camera can scan a wide arc, essential to see in the long nafts. A digital readout reports the angle at which Yupuat is climbing. Before it is ready for the real thing, the robot must undergo rigorous testing. The eight-wheel drive pulls it successfully up a mock shaft, the latest technology in the smallest space. The hydraulic system ensures that the wheels stay in contact with the ceiling. Two years of hard work are building to a climax. Next stop, The city of Cairo has crept ever closer to the pyramids, but they are as majestic as ever. March 1993, the moment of truth draws near. Anyone who drives right up to the base of the pyramid must first have special Under the auspices of the German Archaeological Institute, they have secured the necessary permits. The crew has been provided by the Egyptian Antique Organization, today's secular guardian of this once sacred site. The organization has made every effort to ensure that the project is a success. It has taken $250,000 and the resolute commitment of sponsors and volunteers but Gantenbrink and his team are finally ready to begin their work, trying to solve the last mystery of the Pyramid of Cheops. Before the adventure begins, Gantenbrink, using his powerful computer, has made himself familiar with the marvels of the pyramid's interior. The entrance, highlighted in red. From outside the pyramid, the passageway downward. This type of construction made it easier for the Egyptians to seal off the entrance to the pyramid with massive blocks of stone. This four-ton block of granite bars the way up to the king's chamber. The only way to go is down. Three hundred and sixty feet long, but just over three feet high, the tunnel soon drops below ground level. The want to close in as one moves deeper into the living rock. Like the rest of the pyramid, the tunnel was made by Egyptians who worked during the four months a year when the Nile was in flood. This must have been a brutal task for the workers, crouching in the dark tunnel, lit only by oil lamps, pounding chisels into the solid rock. Even with a flashlight, it's a claustrophobic. The subterranean rock chamber. 140 feet below ground, 
and one of the pyramid's abiding mysteries. Is it an unfinished burial chamber? Or was it, as some archaeologists claim, a conscious attempt to recreate the underworld? Whatever its purpose, it's a dead end. Next, the ascent into the Great Gallery, the route to the King's Chamber. More than 20 feet high, and 140 feet long, built on a slope, this room alone could have been one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It's complemented by the fact that it's an engineering marvel. Instead of using an arch, the Egyptians placed each layer of stones a bit closer together than the layer below until they met at the top. The roof of the gallery must carry the weight of the millions of stones above it. the king's chamber, which lies near the center of the pyramid. There is no proof that Cheops buried here, but the sarcophagus is a strong indication. The rose granite for this room was brought in from Aswan, 500 miles away. The joints are so fine, not even a razor blade would fit between the stones. Each one of these beams weighs 52 tons. Ganthenbrink knows the chamber well. In 1992, he spent six weeks installing a ventilation system here in order to protect the chamber from the humid breath of thousands of tourists. His system is still functioning. It has reduced the humidity to 52%. It was this project that inspired him to dedicate himself to preserving architectural treasures. The Queen's Chamber. This is where Gantenbrink's real objective lies. The team will have five days in which to complete their work. Not long when there are unknown obstacles ahead. inside the Queen's Chamber. A strange place to find such sophisticated equipment. The components have survived their journey well. In just a little while, the robot will be put to the test. Meanwhile, the tourists are sent to another pyramid. The Egyptian authorities have closed the pyramid for several days in order to allow Gantenbrink and his team full access. Here is the shaft into which Yupuat will be sent. The estimated angle upwards is 40 degrees. Providing special help is team member Uli Kapp, 
the chief surveyor at the German Archaeological Institute. The northern shaft in the Queen's chamber. Where could it lead? The Queen's chamber. Whatever their purpose, the shafts originally didn't reach the chamber itself. Instead, the Egyptians left intact the inner surface of the blocks. So, from the chamber, the shafts were completely invisible. In 1879, the archaeologist Wayneman Dixon removed the last couple of inches of stone to open the shafts. He discovered the hollows in the walls by probing with wires into tiny cracks. Gantenbrink is convinced that the builders must have put the shafts here for a reason. Perhaps the ancient Egypt met their match in Gantenbrink. As the robot enters the northern shaft, a new era in Egyptology begins. A robot's eye view of the inside of the shaft. The first six feet are horizontal. Child's play for Yupo out. At the incline, the real test will begin. up a channel that has been closed to humanity for 4,500 years. The first unusual feature of the northern shaft, a crack in the ceiling, its presence hints at the enormous amount of weight pressing down on the shaft from above. What's that lying on the floor? It appears to be a metal of some sort, perhaps half an inch wide. Could the ancient Egyptians have left one of their tools behind?
A closer look reveals threads at the end of the rod. Dixon must have used it to try to explore the shaft. Now it's a potential obstacle for Yupuat. Gantenbrink will have to be very careful. Dixon's rod could be extended by new sections. But what's this? A corner. The Egyptians seem to have frustrated Dixon's efforts. His rod couldn't make it around the corner, and eventually got jammed. But the unexpected turning and the discarded rods could stop you for out as well. The closer the robot gets to the corner, the more Gantenbrink wants to go on. But once it has turned the corner, Yupoout may not be able to return. Rather than putting the mission at risk, Gantenbrink decides to try the southern shaft. What lies ahead, a mystery. Yupoout has travelled about 40 feet, but it hasn't found the end of the shaft. Following the descent, the robot receives a thorough cleaning. It's still in perfect working order. All hopes now focus on the southern shaft. But six feet in, the first problem arises. Because the top of the shaft is abnormally high, the upper wheels of the robot are unable to get any traction. You pull out is helpless. A gentle push might do the trick, but it's no use. Gantenbrink will have to think of something else. Will this be another insurmountable obstacle? Once again, the mission is in danger of failing. It's been a discouraging day. Taking a page from the book of Wayneman Dixon, Gantenbrink attaches to the robot a strip of metal that can be extended from behind. The metal is flexible so that it should be able to push you beyond the critical spot. Then the robot can climb clear. The project is back on track. Once the ceiling is lower, the strip can be removed. After the first block, the ceiling of the shaft resumes its normal height. But now the spot from Yupuhout's laser registers on a break in the floor. A 
another potential obstacle. Even though the robot was designed to roll over sand and small stones, the broken floor could spell trouble. But Gantenbrink steers Yupu out clear of danger. The shaft looks like a cave. Is this a sign it's ending? The smooth texture of the walls resumes. Every loose stone could mean potential disaster, but Yupoaj's journey up the tiny shaft continues into the unknown. Have happened? An earthquake, perhaps? Or just the shifting of the stones? As in the northern shaft, moving past this point could be dangerous. Retrieving the robot could become impossible without a modification. One hundred feet. Excellent progress. In order to predict the further path of the shaft, Gantenbring decides to measure the angle at which it is elevated. He will use a second robot brought from Munich for just this purpose. The second robot pulls itself up the cable behind Yupu out a high-tech rope climber. Because the Egyptians built the pyramids with such precision, the angle should determine the point at which the shaft must emerge from the outside of the pyramid, if it emerges at all. But if it does, why has no one ever found it? Over a cup of Egyptian tea, the team plans the next day's approach. A ceremony with a distinctly local flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolf Gantenbrink decides on a mountaineering expedition to the outside of the pyramid to search for any remaining hint of an outlet of the southern shaft. The experience gained in installators for the king's chamber will once again prove useful.
Climbing the diagonal was the easy part. Moving horizontally is much more difficult, especially at an altitude of 260 feet. The badly eroded stones give a poor foothold. Fortunately, Gantenbrink is familiar with the terrain. He climbed to this exact spot a year earlier in order to install the ventilation system. Gantenbrink had to drill anchors into the stones for safety's sake. The outlet of the ventilation that Gantenbrink fitted to the shaft from the King's Chamber. The Queen's Chamber shaft should be directly beneath. Once roped up, the others can follow with little risk. Gantenbrink has calculated that the exit of the shaft must lie 16 levels down. He hopes to find a stone angled like the shaft within. But there is nothing. The shaft must end in the interior of the pyramid. But how? The last two days will be critical. If the team doesn't reach its goal soon, a golden opportunity will be lost. And now, backing down the shaft, the very thing the team had feared the most has occurred. Yupowat has got stuck in the tunnel. Despite a careful scan with the camera, the reason is unclear. The only chance to save the robot is to lower the superstructure and pull on the cable. Fortunately, despite falling a hundred feet, Yupowat is virtually unharmed. Läuft die Kamera noch? And the camera is still working. Back in the hotel workshop, repairs get underway, as well as a modification that will guarantee that Yupowat can return safely past the jutting corner. Yeah. 
The new device is designed to stop the robot from getting jammed against the projecting block. The last day. The purpose of the tiny shafts leading from the Queen's chamber is still unknown. A spider's web hangs from the ceiling. It moves only because of the thermal air currents caused by the headlamps. How can a spider survive 130 feet up the shaft? What could it... Marks were made in the quarry to tell the ancient miners where to cut. There can't be much further to go if the shaft is to end somewhere inside the pyramid. Did the constructors abandon the shaft midway through? Or will something await us at the end? Yet another obstacle. Is this the end of the trip? This is the highest hurdle that Yupo out has faced. Jan is more determined than ever to succeed. Slowly, gingerly, you pull out, climbs the... Suddenly, the floor is free of sand and the walls have changed to a polished white stone. It seems that this section of the shaft must have had a special purpose. So, I think they are the best point. Yeah, OK, let's just mark on the 22nd of March, 1990, at 11.05 a.m., Out reaches the end of its journey. A slab of limestone. The end or the beginning? piece of copper on the floor. 
This time it is surely an artifact left by the ancient Egyptians themselves. Yipuout's laser dot disappears beneath the slab. But what are the two dark streaks? Close up, they appear to be copper fittings attached to the slab. And the copper on the floor seems to have broken off the one on the left. A little triangular hole seems to invite the camera to peek behind the slab. There's a groove in the wall. There's a gap between the slab and the floor. Could the slab actually be movable? As an engineer, Ganton Brink believes that the slab would make the most sense structurally if it could slide up and down. The stone would have been lowered into place by means of a rope. The copper fittings prevented its removal. Almost 200 feet up the shaft, a place only a robot could go. What further mysteries await? Using space-age robotic technology, Ganton Brink plans to take up the challenge and open this door to the unknown. The pyramids of Egypt, silent witnesses to a missed past. Have they given up all their secrets? For Rudolf Gantenbrink and his team, the fascination with the unknown will soon turn into an unparalleled adventure. Until now, the last secret of the Great Pyramid has remained unexplored. A shaft, too small to be entered by a human being. Where does it lead? Where does it end? An offbeat idea is born and in two years of painstaking preparation finally becomes reality. A robot dubbed Upuout, the opener of passageways. With this machine, archaeology chances a step into the space age. Upuout blazes a trail deep into the heart of the pyramid, but the shaft seems to fend off the intruder. Obstacles and difficulties abound, 
but dauntlessly the robot closes in on its target. On March 22, 1993, Upuaut ends its journey, creating a sensation and provoking tremendous speculations. Is this the door to a hidden chamber? Now and new findings. Through evaluation of existing material and following clues that have puzzled him for some time, Gantenbrink makes an astonishing discovery. Most puzzling are these strange markings or grooves on the floor of the shaft. What do they tell us? The mystery unravels quickly if one considers that the Egyptians had long since created seamlessly fitting stone blocks for the finishing work inside the pyramid by cutting them with a copper-bladed saw. Of course, this process left a mark on the underlying surface, evidence that can be found on many structures if one just looks hard enough. On the floor of the shaft, the same kind of markings can be seen. Evidently, a saw has left these marks. But what part of the pyramid was constructed here? On other parts of the shaft, this method was not used. We see clearly that these blocks have been shaped with a chisel. But at this point, the chambers were already completed. This groove clearly proves that it could not have been a casing stone either, because they were worked on once they were in their final position. And even more mystery. Practically through the entire upper shaft, scratches like these can be followed along the walls. And since the scratches are much lighter than the walls, they must have been created some time after the structure was finished. And what about this strange residue on the wall? Doesn't it look hollow? Similar features can also be found in other areas of the shaft. Strings had been temporarily attached to the walls by means of mortar, which speaks for the fact that something had been pulled up the shaft with those strings. But whatever it was, it's no longer there. It must have disappeared behind the so-called door. The research department of the Linde Corporation in Munich, Germany is well known for its sophisticated methods of analysis. As at the beginning of the venture, high tech once again will be put to use to answer the burning question, is there something behind the mysterious door? The robot will attempt to insert two tiny capillary tubes into a crack under the stone slab. A special gas will be injected. There is nothing behind the door the gas will escape through the gaps between the stone blocks. But should there be a hermetically sealed chamber behind the door, the gas will stay trapped. Its volume can be measured, thus determining the size of the possible chamber. By the way, Gantenbrink is convinced that the robot was recording images of the back side of the door. If today an engineer were presented with the task of attaching something to such a stone slab, he would drill two holes, insert a kind of clamp, and then bend the ends to piece from slipping out. It would look the same way the so-called door was discovered. To prove this theory, an electric current could be sent through the metal clamp. If it exits at the other end, we can be certain that the functional part of the door is on the opposite side. Ever since the sensational discovery in the southern shaft of the so-called Queen's Chamber, the northern shaft has received little publicity, but there too, an equally enticing mystery awaits to be solved. At the British Museum in London, two curious objects found in the northern shaft are on display. One resembles a grappling hook of the kind used on boats. The two holes drilled into the instrument seem to match holes in a piece of wood still lodged at the bottom of the shaft. In 1879, British archaeologist Wayne Dixon retrieved a number of artefacts from the shaft, but left behind an important object, most likely a piece of wood. Once extracted, the wood could be carbon dated, being another clue about the age of the Great Pyramid. The technology for this newest venture has already been designed. Once again, as at the beginning of this project, high tech must be the name of the game. Will already the exploration of this northern shaft solve yet another riddle about the mysterious pharaoh?
then it is really a kind of a question that the final answer can be done when we'll do the work. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.